Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to part four. Today we're going to do it guys. This is going to be a lengthy video, but it's going to have everything that you need to see before the bike's complete. So it is going to be done today. It's going to be on the road. As you can see, the bike was purchased last year and went through four parts, starting with part one, where we disassembled everything. We assessed what parts we needed and began the preparations for the restoration project. Part two, we went ahead and did frame restoration and chrome polishing. We also showed you all the products that I like using, including what paints I use, rust removers, and did a touch-up job on it as well. Part three, went ahead and did an overhaul of all the bearings, including pedals, rims, and then went ahead and got all the chrome ready to go in preparation for part four. So finally today we'll get her done. Part four of the 1974 Shrimp Sprint with a C2 curvature, short frame. Very cool bike. This bike was manufactured in 74 and 75 and made in three colors the first year, including opaque blue, cool lemon, and opaque red. Again, we went over this bike, touched it up, came out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with the results. And then I put it away for several months. Last thing I did to it was put the rear brake caliper on it, and then put everything away. So. I just went through my entire garage to find everything and I found the boxes and I got to go through and make sure all the parts are still there. So this is where we left it. So I just took inventory of all the parts, they're all still there. Crank, the pedals, the fork, the chain, here's the old school rear split cable and the front cable, new inner wire as well saddle there's the derailleurs as well and there's the other brake caliper that's the bar tape I was able to find it's very close to the original so that's going to look great uh, this I'm going to replace the lever itself is not in bad shape but that release is faded it's supposed to look like this and it looks like the sun got the best of that one so I did find a pair that basically brand new is going to look great on here and then I also got the inner cable for the shifters here's the original shifter cable it's a little bit more rigid and it's got different texture to it and this is a replacement it's exactly the same thing so we're going to go ahead and install the one piece crank I already went through and made sure the bearing cups were perfectly smooth and clean polished them out as well very smooth so we're going to go ahead and put some grease in there, put the crank set in there. Alright, so there's a the one piece crank. Uh, we're going to go ahead and use a little bit of park tool grease on it. Uh, everything's been cleaned, so we're ready to go. We're going to make sure that we pack these bearings nicely, put plenty of grease on there. And then there's the rest of your pieces. So there's your lock nut, key washer, and your cone. So let's go ahead and get started, get this together. Alright, so we packed the bearings so we can go ahead and get the crank in there. Now before you put it in, I went ahead and put that in there and packed it, but I'm going to take it out so I can go ahead and make it fit. I just want to make sure I had plenty of grease in there. So again, you just put this in there, kind of just maneuver it around, go ahead and get your bearings up in here. There you go. And again, I already pre-greased everything to make sure I had all the grease I needed in there. And then I'm going to grab the cone and use the same grease that I already have in my hands. To, again, I already put plenty in there, so not much more else needed. And this goes counterclockwise. So make sure you don't cross thread it. So just so once you get it started, just turn it a little bit. And then use the spanner tool here to bring it closer. Okay, now remember this cone here has to just be 
tight enough so there's no play because you don't want it binding at all so he's got to make sure that it's in there tight but not too tight so you just uh, just pretty good there's no play release a little bit a little bit better all right so that's about right where I want it all right let's go ahead and put the other parts on it so this is your key washer there's a slot that this is going to fit right into put that right in there and again it's a left-handed thread so you want to go counterclockwise to tighten and then you can use the tighten it just enough to make sure it's not binding feels pretty good and then I'm gonna go ahead and just tighten it just a little bit to make sure she's secure there we go I can feel a binding so I'm gonna back it off just a little bit and that makes a big difference so okay so I backed off the cone just a little bit where there was just a little bit of play and then I was able to tighten this down nice so that way there's no play but at the same time it still spins great alright she's on there spinning nicely so after a little bit of tweaking I got it just where I wanted it we're gonna go ahead and do the headset that's the race that goes right there on the bottom of the fort bottom bearing that's the top bearing and that's your cone and your lock nut so let's go ahead and get started get it all greased up and put it on the bike so we'll go ahead and put this down here and get it secure right there then these bearings I like to really get them packed and again you want to make sure that you get that grease inside there so I'm going to go ahead and bring the fork over to the bike and we'll go ahead and put the set on. I went ahead and greased the bearing cup and I put that other greased bearing up there as well. I'm going to slide this right up in here. You got the bearing nice greased in there as well. So that just goes right in there. And then you got your... And this again does go clockwise. Bring it all the way to the top, and again, this is another piece that you don't want to tighten too much. You want to make sure that you have good motion. Just tighten just enough where there's no play, and it's, it turns nicely, so you can use it until you definitely you know feel you feel secure. So, so that should do it. All right, next thing is we're going to go ahead and put the dual stick shifters there. So let's do that. This piece goes next. This is your hanger for your brake cables. And then your, your dual stick shifters go up there. And now you're ready for your lock nut up here. Go ahead and use it off of that. All right, and then go ahead and make all the adjustments, and tighten it down, and uh, we'll lower the bike to, so we can get to it a little bit better up there. So, and that crown drill good on there, and that's all original as well. All right, and next we'll go ahead and do the front derailleur. This should go right about here, right on top of that chain ring, so it can carry that chain right over to the top there. That's about where it should go. So we'll go ahead and and then you can adjust it once it's on there. So that's pretty close there. Once we get the chain on it, we'll make the adjustments as needed. So I'm just gonna tighten up a little bit, but not too much, just to have the placement there. So if you look at it this way, it should be about like that. And right on top of that chain ring right there so 
but again you can adjust it once you get the chain on it. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and do the rear derailleur. And as you know, this hanger just goes there. Uh, it's got a couple of little notches or these little tabs which actually fit inside that slot there. And then this is the washer behind it. It also has like a little fitting to it. And this slides in like this right at the back. And then you put your derailleur in there. And then you just put the two together, like right there. So that's how it should be. And you just tighten it. Make sure that's fitting exactly the same way. Push it back. And then once it's seated properly, you go ahead and tighten it. And there you go. Alright, got the front brakes on. And we'll put the brake pads after we put the wheels and tires on it. Make the adjustments as needed. Put the bar tape on the handlebar as well as change out the brake levers. Again, this is the original gold dot with a quick release shoe in brake, and uh, this one's pretty good. It's got a little bit of a tear right there, but uh, like I told you before, the other one was really faded, and I was able to find some vintage new old stock in perfect condition. And if you can see, they're exactly the same. Get a really clean gold dot on it. The only thing I noticed though, the top cable guide is bigger on the new ones, and there's the original ones. So I'm actually going to use the original ones because I like the way they look. They're a little bit smaller and have a little bit more sheen to the chrome. So I'm going to use those. Right, I went ahead and put the second position levers on just to make sure they were straight and line them up. So that way when they hang, they hang at the same angle. So you can see right there how they match. And then the height of the each one of these seems to match as well, so I feel good about that. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten them up. So I also notice another difference with these uh, second position levers. The ones that came with the new old stock came stamped with uh, Diacom, which is the manufacturer of these parts. However, the Schwinn ones, they had them white labeled as Schwinn approved. So I'm going to go ahead and use the old levers as well. This one needs to be polished. This one I had polished already, so you can see the difference of the two. So I'll go ahead and get this one polished as well. And that will have the original cable guide and levers. So I polished the original part and it came out awesome. And you can see a little bit better there. Uh, the Schwinn approved stamp on it. This one just has that comp. Another thing I noticed too, look at the workmanship on this one. See how it's got that nice little contour on there? And that, that one's just flat. So these uh, older ones definitely had a little bit more refined workmanship on them. So and look at the top of it right there. That's got that tab at the top whereas the original ones are tucked in and I'm not sure what the performance difference is going to be but visually this is what it looks like with the tab up and the way the original Schwinn's looked as you can see on one of my bikes over here that's the way that's supposed to look I'll definitely uh, stick with the original parts now I wanted to show you how these come together because there is a few washers to keep in mind when you're putting it together. This right here, this little spring, is one that if you don't watch it when you take them apart, it'll just pop right out of here. So that goes in here, the spring is right in here, and then you got the rest of these washers. So I'll put this together for you guys real quick here. It's pretty simple basically, but if you took it apart and then remember how the parts went back together, this might be uh, helpful. Right, well, here's the 
brake lever as well as the suicide lever and again uh, I was talking about this little spring that goes in here and then this washer goes right there this is the lever right here so this gets tucked in here just like that and then that goes in here just like that and then you got your first washer and second one just like that and then you just tighten that down so that's how you do it now this is a total of five yards two and a half per side and these already come pre-rolled as such so I'll go ahead and get started and again I already got the tape on either side to get that first loop started alright so I went ahead and secured the tape down for the first loop and just make sure that it is straight and then bring it around and it will be a complete loop the first time but as you're coming around, go ahead and pull away just a little bit. And make sure you're nice and tight on there. That's where you're going to get the most friction with your hands. Right about this point, you want to go about half of the tape. Because you're going to gradually going to pull away to basically one third. And right about now. I can go ahead and start getting to that point. And nice and even there. And there we go. So right now we're already at exactly just covering up a third of the tape. And with each turn, just pull it not too tight, but tight enough where you're getting a good snug fit. When you get to the turns, you got to be careful not to open up too much and show some of the chrome on the back of it so you got to make sure that you're keeping an eye on, on where you're at with that and keep in mind that there's no tape there's no adhesive on this tape so if you mess up you can just unwind it and start over again so you can do a couple of practice runs you just don't pull it out of shape and as we get closer to the lever here this is where you want to go ahead and wrap it at the top and then come around and underneath like this alright so I'll show you how I did that again so again uh, going backwards now alright so there's how I did it so again as I got closer to it I came up right over the, the lever like that and then underneath and then back around and then back over again and again that's what gives you that look right there and again once you go around you just kind of continue your direct and you just keep an eye on all your turns make sure you're not showing any chrome to about here you want to make sure that you stay true to your one third so you have plenty of tape to tuck in there you go and you can just straighten out those little ends and you just grab your hand cap and put in your There you go. All right, that side is done. So again, no tape was used besides holding the initial loop, and it's a really clean install there. So that looks nice. Here's the end here. 
All right, so now we'll do the other side. This tape's about anywhere from ten to twenty dollars, depending on the seller on eBay. But this is uh, the authentic same tape, same texture that Shrin used. This one actually came in a Shrin approved little label bag. But the guys who made it was Hunt Wild. They made it for Schwinn. You can find that brand as well. And they keep the turns symmetrically even all the way through. Gives you a nice end result. You can keep this cover up one third of the tape. Keep a nice tight wrap. Right, so as you come into the end, you want to start pulling this like that and here's the tuck go around notice how this already starts folding in and there you go That's it. All right, the other side is done as well. Looking great. Yeah, those new brake levers definitely uh, make the whole thing look pristine. So very happy to find those. It's been pretty true. There's a little bit of a wobble that you can probably can't hear over the fans, but it's a uh, very slight right where the valve stand is. So let's see if I can adjust it a little bit. I'll spin a little bit faster. Alright, so we'll go ahead and uh, right there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and tighten this side and loosen this one a little bit. And that should do it. And tighten, you wanna go counterclockwise. It's that quarter turn, and then I'm going to loosen this one, quarter turn, a little bit more, tighten this one, and loosen this one. That's really close to the rim, so that's not bad at all for a 45-year-old rim. As you can see, that uh, it's pretty close to the rim there without making any noise, so that's pretty good. So that'll work. So I went ahead and uh, polished the rims, overhauled the bearings, and then polished all the spokes as well. Took a little bit of steel wool and some very light sandpaper uh, that's kind of like a finishing sandpaper that's to you know just to make sure they're but it makes a big difference in how those spokes gleam so uh, we'll go ahead and put some tires on it and then we'll work on the back All right, and the rear is done as well that came out really nice back there and uh, this rim is also pretty straight again that's uh, really close to the rim there and it did have a wobble on it but I was able to get it pretty straight Go ahead and mount the tires and I've been using the Kenda brand. This is the K35. It's a 27 and a quarter. It's a wire bead and it's a 90 PSI, so it's high pressure. And what I like about it is that they have the same threading as the vintage 
trend bikes did, or at least some of the ones that I've seen that might have been replacements, but I thought these worked out pretty good, and uh, they're not a bad car. I like having the, the little logo on the side of the gear, and I put it right at the stem, so that way if you have a nail or something, you can kind of identify where it might be on the rim or on the tire by looking at that. For the tubes, I like using the Presta valve. They seem to work out really nice. And they're pretty sturdy. I like the all steel valve on it. So we'll just take off this. And this goes on top of the rim. Loosen this a little bit. Makes me a little bit of air and you have to get it started. And that should be enough. And after securing the, the valve stem, then I start putting in the bead all the way around one side. And I let out a little bit of the air, even a little bit more room. So once you got that side in, then you go ahead and flip it over. Then I start at the stem. And then work all the way around. Take it in there, and there you go. Then you make sure this is secure, and we'll put a little bit more air on it. And then just make sure that the tire is seated properly before you put all the air in it. So we'll go ahead and. Uh, Make sure it's sitting perfect. It looks like a good install. We got our rims ready to install on the bike. Went ahead and put the reflectors back on it. And again, the tire pressure label is on this side of the tire, which is going to be the gear side. You notice the reflectors on the opposite side of the valve stem, the counterweight a little bit. And these uh, go about an inch from the rim. And then make sure that you do secure these pretty snug, not too tight because these are plastic nuts on the back to hold the, I think the spokes are so tight enough so it doesn't shake off of there. So here's all the original shifter cable housing. I was able to use this as a template to basically cut all the the new parts and again uh, I went ahead and pre-cut them and put them on the bike to make sure everything fits perfectly so there's a two for the shifter this is the one that goes between the cable stop and the front derailleur and then there's one down here as well for the rear derailleur that takes it on top of the bottom bracket and again there's a method to how long these are so they lay perfectly on that bottom bracket and then the little short one here for the rear derailleur and this is the part number for the derailleur inner wire and these again are perfect for these vintage bikes because they have the very small pancake head they also have the other side as well that one you'll just cut off because you won't need it but that's the perfect size to fit into that slot that's definitely very narrow. That slot is right there. So this will tuck right in there and uh, you'll know, be able to have a nice finished look. the brake cable hanger for the caliper brake and the saddle went on nicely the chrome looks really good on on all the hardware and it's all original as well I did change out the saddle on the original video I had the saddle had a little tear in it so this is a exact same one in great shape and that's exactly where I want it so 
So we're going to go ahead and put the handlebar on. I do like to put a little bit of grease inside the steer too. So we'll go ahead and get that handlebar greased up as well and we'll put it in there. Alright, then we'll go ahead and grease this up just a little bit. And this is the wedge that basically when you tighten it, this goes up and expands the stem into the steer tube and keeps it from coming out and turning. So, so you just make sure that this is at the bottom position, like if it's like that. Make sure that you push it down, that way there's no pressure as it goes in. And then you slide it in, it should go in pretty easy, especially with a lube in it. A little bit of grease definitely helps put it in there. And uh, you should already know the height is. This have a, a mark right there that's kind of a standard height. I just, I just make it tight enough so it stays on there, then when I actually put the bike down, we'll adjust it accordingly, at least to get it started there. And keep in mind that this lock nut here, on this side, this lock nut really has no effect on the stem. It's only a lock nut to tighten the headset. So you don't really have to do anything to this if you're putting it in or out. And we just make the final adjustments. And just make it tight enough where you can still go back and make uh, any changes needed. And then I just wipe off any of the extra grease that's seeped out. And then we're going to put the cable in. As I said before, remember you got two ends. You got the barrel side and you got the coin or pancake head. So we'll go ahead and get those in there, cut it off already. And then you just want to put this in your slot right here. We we'll start with the rear, and uh, what I like to do now is just put the cable in, and see how it tucks right in there. And then I'm going to lube this part of the cable here, and then slide the housing into it to avoid getting the rest of the cable contaminated with oil. So I don't want it to pick up dust and debris. So I just use the CL1 part tool chain lube seems to work pretty good the scotch is just right for it so uh, I just put a little bit of this on my fingers and then just rub it right under the cable the length of, of the left of the housing went ahead and ran the cable and I uh, just come on moving back and forth to get it nice and looped and then go ahead and insert it into the after you put the cable through there and put the housing on it then it goes through this cable stop right there and if you notice the cable goes through it and it stops it right there so next we're going to do the one right here so we'll do the same process we'll go ahead and loop the cable first put it through there and then move forward onto the back okay so I went ahead and looped the part of the cable is going to fit right in here so I like to leave this right in there so that way I can slide it in and then start pushing it through. All right, and then he just goes right through there. And again, I loop the cable right about where it's going to land, so there is the loop part of it. Right through there it went, and it's nice and looped. And again, there was a little bit of the loop that was just sticking outside of it, so I'm going to wipe that down. And then we'll go ahead and get it through this part right here. So I can kind of see where the cable is going to make its turn, so I'm going to grease that little bit right there. I went ahead and put a little bit of lube right into the cable, and go ahead and put this through here. And then just feed it through. And then you'll have to make this turn here. And take it down like that. Alright, so we ran the cable all the way through and around so you want to start with the position up there when the position is up against the handlebar this is going to be on the lowest gear so as you move this down you'll see how this shifts up the different gears so that seems to be working okay and I went ahead and lubed all the pivots where there's movement. So, so the next thing we're going to do 
we're going to install this uh, chain stay protector, which keeps a uh, chain slap and then this cable from scratching it. So here's what happens from years of wear, typically. So Schwinn always provided every bike with this little plastic guard called a chain stay protector, and I was able to find some reproductions that seem to do the job. So I went ahead and put that on. And there it is. So that'll protect that chain stay. And it also just makes it look very authentic, old school. And the last part is putting it through this cable here that goes to the derailleur. And it's going to get grease from about there to pretty much the end. So I could actually just loop the cable to make it easier as well. So we'll go ahead and run this through here first. Just push it through all the way, make it easy. And then we'll go ahead and insert the cable. And at this point you go ahead and slide that through there until it sits just like that. I'm just going to go ahead and back this off a little bit. Alright, and then we stick this one through here. This one's a little bit hard because you, you're working from underneath. So you got to be able to get that in there just right in such a small little little hole. There we go. That was lucky. So you thread it through there. And make sure you're sitting correctly. And uh, you should start it a little bit tight. Just make sure you're pulling it tight enough. You want to have a little bit of tension on here, not terribly tight, because when you pull it, again, you're at the top position, closest to the handlebar, when it's on the bottom sprocket. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten this down. And then we'll go ahead and test it real quick here, make sure it's shifting. And, uh, and there's the movement, so that takes it into the bigger gear that drops it down to the lower gear. So we'll go ahead and put the chain on it and test it and see uh, how that works. Alright, then we'll go ahead and just trim the cable. And then we'll go ahead and finish it off with the ferrule. And put a crimp on it. Alright, and they're all done. So both cables are up and running. Here's how they tuck in on the back slots, tucked away nicely. All right, we're rolling. Just gonna put the chain on it. Got up front and rear. So after I cleaned the chain, I went ahead and stored it in the baggie, and I put a bunch of the CO1 on it just to keep it rust-free until I got to it, and it looks to be in pretty good shape. So I'm gonna pull it out and uh, get that on the bike. This derailleur, when it comes out, it just sits like that, so you want to make sure that when you put it on, you pull it this way, and the chain's gonna go through here and back around that way. So I'm gonna go ahead and start here. So take it through there, and around, and then over this way like this. And I'll take it through my derailleur there. And it's going to land right on that first chain ring. And I made this little tool here uh, out of a paper clip. And it helps me hold the chain down so I can use both hands to, to bring the other tool on this little. So once you get the chain where you want it, go ahead and just pull it there like that. Now I can go ahead and go in here and get my chain link. I'll just bring this on here and snap it in there. And then I'll go ahead and tighten them down. Alright, and then once we know it's nice and straight, we'll go ahead and push it all the way through. We've got our chain on. Now we'll go ahead and uh, see if it that's on the first gear. Make sure that it's properly flexing. It's 
working so far, so we'll go ahead and uh, move it a little bit and uh, we'll see how we do. All right, so we'll put a little bit of grease right here into the pedal threading. A little bit right there as well. And this is the right side, so this does thread clockwise. Now the left one does thread counterclockwise, and then just tighten it good. All right, and that's both of them now. front derailleur. There we go. Alright, not bad. It'll go through all the gears. We'll tweak it out a little bit once we actually get on it and ride it. So all we need to do is put the brake cables on it, dual position levers, and the brake pads, and then we can take her out for a spin. So, yeah, very happy how it's coming out. So before installing the cable, I like to make sure that the housing fits properly. And this is the rear one, just as uh, it was packaged. And if you notice, it goes from there, it gets tucked in there, and it comes around, and it goes to that piece right there. And these do go on the outside of these cables, like this. And that loops just about perfect on it. See that length right there? I like the way that looks, not too much. Now the front cable definitely needs to be trimmed down. So I'm going to probably trim it down to cut it to uh, right there right, so get trimmed down to about like that that way those loops match and you'll notice that on continentals and sprints Schwinn put one cable in front and the other cable behind so I use these rubber bands to hold the lever up in place so the cable doesn't fall out of the little saddle that way I can go ahead and pre-fit everything I went ahead and put these on there and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, adjust them once I get the bike on there, I'm going to put the brake pads on, bring these up, and then we'll go ahead and hang it right. The other cable I was talking about, I said stops right there, then you have bare cable all the way to the other cable stop, and then there's that short little loop, and all the way down here. And again, we'll do the same thing here. We'll just pinch this, bring it up, and lock it up. So the last thing is just to lube the cables right on the spots. So and that way they'll be able to move freely. All right, we'll go ahead and put the brake pads on. As you'll notice, these come in two different shapes. So you want to make sure that you put them like this. So that way they'll hit the rim in this way. So those just go in, get your washer, and then you adjust the height based on the rim. So we'll go ahead and put those on first. All right, perfect. Now this thing you can tighten once you figure out where you want your brakes to be. So you can actually hold them down like that and then adjust your brake pads accordingly. So we'll go ahead and do that next. I like to use this tool here. This clamp here is perfect for this project. It allows me to squeeze the calipers in to right at the rim. So you can see I can also make the adjustment of where I want the brake pads to go. So that can be lowered just a smidge but it's pretty much right on track same with that side over there right, we'll just tighten up the second position levers there we go alright 
right, and she is finally done. So very happy to finish this. So he's going to put her down, make sure everything uh, feels right. Take it outside for a spin. So after a long delay, the bike finally will ride again. Let's put her down and see how she rolls. All right, everything is tight on it. So again, this is the way the bike would have been presented back in 1974 at the dealership. Does the cable combination, like I talked about earlier, is that cable again drops right into the hanger there for the brakes. But those levers definitely look great. All the chrome on the bike is in really good shape. And again, the touch up on the paint really presents well. And again, this bike falls right between the Varsity and the Continental as far as the lineup of the lightweights. So I'll probably do an updated video with my latest editions of my road bikes, including the World Voyager, which actually falls in the number two position right over the Sports Tourer and right underneath the Paramount. So that's going to be a very cool one. And I have that there in those boxes. So I'll be pulling that out next. But for now, again, the 1974 Sprint is complete. We'll take it outside and get some shots out there and see how she rides. So the bike is an August of 1974 build. Hard to believe this bike is 45 years old. So just to recap the restoration, again this bike is a 1974 Schwinn Sprint. Only produced in 1974 and 75 and that curb seat post was what they introduced and tried to sell it as a fun ride according to the catalog and what it actually did was you notice you're sitting a little bit closer to that rear axle so it gives you a little bit better leverage going up hills however it didn't really do as well as far as their sales so they discontinued it after 1975 so again this bike is all original this is I found that the only thing I replaced on it was the bar tape. That color is hard to find and that color looks pretty good. I also replaced the cables, outer and inner cables, brake pads, and new tires. And then touched up the paint as seen in part two. Then I also replaced the brake levers and the original was in pretty good shape except for the one on this side was faded out. But other than that everything else is original including the reflectors. And this bike got the cool little round one. And this was cool about the Soul Schwinn's. They got chrome that definitely comes back to life with a little bit of polish. Did all the bearings, overhauled pedals. So this thing's humming. And these old bikes, even though they're part of the lightweight category, they're still 35, 38 pounds, so definitely stayed under you. So if you were going down in traffic, the cars are not gonna push you off the road. So they're pretty smooth ride, although not the lightest bike compared to today's bikes. But still, grand old bike. People really love to see these old bikes. So very happy with the build. Came out just as I imagined it. And again, when I do these bikes, my goal is to make them look just like they did on the Schwinn Cells floor. This bike uh, was made in three colors. Opaque blue, cool lemon, and opaque red. And then they released it in 75 as well, added a few more colors. All original decals, you can tell they're a little bit 
aged. So that gives the bike character. Bike is running really smooth. Shifting into every gear. So this one is original paint and I left it alone besides touching it up. So very glad to get it done. And I can move forward to other projects that I have pending. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next one.